Good morning. Today's inclusive strength class is going to be a little bit different. I want to share with you the different tools and props that I use to support me in my strength conditioning and that you too can use. And I especially want to show that we don't need that much or any special equipment. We don't need so-called gym stuff and that we can make use of everyday items as well as items that we find at the thrift store or that our friends and family are maybe not using in order to complement our strength practice. So the point of all this is that while we might be working on our mobility, our balance, our flexibility, our coordination, and all of that is wonderful, when we add a load or a resistance to the body, it heightens and activates the need for the body to develop capacity in the form of strength. So this resistance or load, which is applied to the body, sends messages to our cells, everything from our bone cells to our neurons to our muscle cells, to develop more units and to sort of come online to meet the demand that we're placing on it. So at some point, if we want to get stronger, we do need to increase the demand because otherwise whatever we've adapted to will sort of plateau and we won't be getting the message in our cells to increase capacity. This is why we use resistance bands, weights, and sometimes body weight, of course, to develop strength. So the first thing I want to talk about is bands. Now, in my classes, when we meet in person, we would use the red resistance band, which is a kind of wonderful, medium tension, very versatile tool. And in a moment, I'll share more about resistance bands, but I wanted to say that now that I've been teaching online, I'm not sure if everybody has one of these, and I'm not sure if they're available to you, so I wanted to show some other options. The first is to have something non-stretchy, and I'm literally, for today's class, using whatever was available in the room right now because I didn't want to go out of my way to get something special since my point is to show you that you can use what you already have. Here is a scarf and I would like to show how um, just using a non-stretchy band, belt, um, bathrobe, tie, yoga strap, and so on can help us to begin um, connecting with the muscular actions and sort of activate the sensations in the body that we might then experience when we are using a resistance band. So just I'm going to give you one example here. This band is not stretchy, it's not flexible, and by hooking it around the soles of my feet and sitting here in Dandasana or staff pose and pulling as if it were stretchy, as if I could maybe break the band, I am feeling the contractions in my upper thoracic spine. I feel the movement of my scapulae coming in towards the center line. I feel the engagement of my biceps and just by pulling against this static load of the unyielding scarf, I'm already getting kind of the first step of this uh, pulling activation that we might do at a later time with weight or with resistance. So by pulling against my unmoving uh, scarf, I'm getting muscular contraction, I'm getting a sense of what has to work to create the pulling action that I'm doing here that might be similar to rowing or doing a pull-up. Okay, so I'm, I'm particularly sensing the actions in the 
um, upper back and shoulder girdle, but I also can feel how my grip has to kick in. So holding the band in my wrist, sorry, not the band, the scarf, I feel the demand on my fingers, the coordination and strength through the hand and wrist. I can feel how it all connects. So that could be a place to begin, even if you don't have a resistance band, simply using a static object like a strap and then pulling, creating a sort of, it would be like doing an isometric exercise, but you are using an external object. I'm really pulling my hand apart from my elbow here and something's happening for sure. So this is kind of like a first ingredient to the strengthening and the development of capacity in my musculature, my bones, and my nervous system. Okay. Now, if you want to use resistance bands, I want to show you some options. Um, as a therapist and a teacher, I did end up getting the 50-yard box of TheraBand, which I cut into pieces for my students. You don't need to do this. You probably don't need this much resistance band. If you really can't find one, please get in touch with me and I will send you one. However, the thrift stores and friends and family who um, had bands and just decided they didn't want to use them anymore have been a great source for me. So the first thing that you might encounter in the thrift stores or online or in your sort of um, previous gym or aerobic life are these kinds of resistance bands which have, here I'll show you up close, they have a hook at each end and then there's a set of handles and there are usually a set will come with um, three or four different bands, different stiffnesses. Also the band that I got has um, this covering in the middle. I'm not sure what that's for. I guess that's just to protect it. So this can be one good option. What I would say about these is to be aware that there's this kind of metal and plasticky part at the end, which slightly increases the risk of injury. Like if you were to let go, suddenly it could hit you in the face. But this is something that I have seen many times in thrift stores, like many, many sets of these. Once you start tuning into the um, kind of sporty gym section of the thrift store, you won't believe how many treasures you can find. So these are fine, and I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what the colors mean. Um, I could probably tell just by feeling it. Yeah, so I have black, it's very tight, and then I have blue, and then I think red is the stretchiest. But they're a little bit cumbersome because of these parts, which you can take off, but still very serviceable. Um, so that's one thing that you may have on hand or be able to find, and I recommend getting them. These two came from the thrift store, and they are similar to my red TheraBand, but they're different thicknesses and different tensions. So the purple is feeling very stiff, and the green is feeling very loose, and the blue is something in between. So these would be great to have if you can happen upon something like this. If you do want to buy something new, you also can get this set of four, three, four, five colors and different stiffnesses um, in a package from you know who, my boyfriend Jeff Bezos. So 
Then we have the sort of the red one I was telling you about that we use, the standard all-purpose. Um, this just seems to be, honestly, I got the red one because two of my movement teachers said this was the best all-around kind of average tension one. What you can do if you have a, a stiffness that feels like um, it's kind of, you could you would like a little bit more challenge, is you simply double it. So if you double a red band and then start pulling against it, it has suddenly become like the purple band, if you see what I mean. So if you have a band, experiment with doubling or maybe even tripling it, this would be analogous to doubling or tripling the resistance. With the bands, you can do um, pinning down one part of the band with your body weight and working against the resistance while securing part of the band to the floor. You can probably see here how the longer the space between my hands, the easier this movement is, and that might be exactly where I need to start in order, in this case, just to mobilize my thoracic spine and my whole spine in a kind of uh, rotational movement that includes widening across the collarbones and starting to work with loading one arm. Now, if I were to tighten that space, now I'm really having to resist more or to work against resistance. I might not be able to rotate so easily, but I can feel more engagement, more recruitment of my lateral body, the musculature that's both stabilizing and enabling this movement. So again, the tension is very adjustable. It's one of the things I love about these. You can literally move your hand an inch along the band or double it to create many, many different variations and gradations of resistance. Um, so I was just showing you ways that we can pin part of the band down and then work against it. We can also use the band sort of in a more freeform way for mobilization. So it's creating um, a focal point for my awareness of this, you know, moving the arms. Um, what would this be? I'm moving my hands apart and I'm retracting my shoulder blades and I'm trying to maintain the tension. So as soon as I feel a little bit of slackness, slackness I know that I want to push back out to that sense of um, tension and meeting the tension with my own body. So although I am not pinning down the band to the floor or to the wall or something like that, I'm using it in a very dynamic way, which feels completely different than doing this. It really is like... N maybe not night and day, but you know, having this tension compared to doing this is completely different in terms of what it's calling on in my musculature and my stability um, in my core, in my shoulders, in my back. The thing about resistance bands is that they give us feedback on a spectrum which becomes more and more loaded at the end range. And by that I mean that for this beginning part, it's kind of easy, 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 starting to feel resistance more and more and more. Each increment of greater stretch is increasing the resistance. So let's just keep that in mind when we look at weights, because that is a big difference between bands and weights. 
with the weight the moment you take it into your hand it weighs the same no matter where you are in the range you're kind of getting a more consistent load or challenge no matter which part of the range you're in it may still be a greater challenge to hold the weight at the widest range of motion or the end range but the weight itself and its load on your body never changes i hope that makes sense there's no better or worse it's just good for us to be aware of that sort of mechanical difference all right so looking at weights i want to just disclose that when i was a full-time yoga practitioner i had no time for weights i didn't understand the benefit of weights i felt like weightlifting and working with weights was either for people who wanted to sculpt their bodies like in a kind of bodybuilder way or i'm not sure what i thought it was for but it wasn't for me and i believed that my body weight was all that was necessary i kind of had this um idea that well this is a sufficient and entirely complete package and if i want to use my body weight for example to do a uh, push up or in yoga chaturanga dandasana that's all i need however my body kind of weighs a lot so if i'm not very strong in a certain range and if i need to progress i can't cut off part of my body to start at a lower weight if that makes sense so i realized that having different objects to use as weights permits me to be progressive it permits me to incrementally add load and then also to see how each increment feels so that i can back off if it's too much so that i can notice that i've increased capacity so that i know when to go a little bit higher and it's not all or nothing as it is with our body weight having said that maybe this would be a good time to start with the body as the first weight that we're going to talk about um it is possible in certain situations to skillfully use your own body weight as a sort of gradual weight progression um let me try and think of some examples so one would be you know when we want to work in the push up mode to rather than do a full on regular push up is to take some of the weight with the knees and do a push up that way so if i am pushing up from a conventional push up position with my weight borne only on my toes and my hands i definitely have more load to work against than if more of my body weight is supported by um my knees okay so that would be one example of how you could do a body weight exercise and take some of that weight off um let me think of another well let's say this all this stuff here is for demonstration purposes so i'm not going to push it out of the way quite yet but um that's why that's there let's say we wanted to do some side planks okay so i would have the option of using two hands as a beginning entry into laterally lifting my body weight off the floor i could also support my body with my leg and do some lifting of one side only and then from there i might practice 
taking the weight out of one hand and then replacing it. Or what else could I do? Yeah, just sort of playing with this lift here. Maybe putting the supporting foot behind the other leg. So all this is building strength and I am using my body weight and I am gradually kind of placing more and more of the body weight into the um, shoulder, which is the traditional place that a side plank would be coming from. So there's a balance component as well. And now I can start to take more of my body weight all the way up. And so you can see how I did use my body like a set of several different weights becoming heavier and heavier. Having said that, what's the point of all this? Well, it's just nice to have even lighter weights just to familiarize ourselves with the loading actions on the joints, with the kind of coordinations and co-contractions of our muscles, and to give us a feeling of positive satisfaction at our progress. I do feel like, again, like with the bands, if we get really hung up on the idea that we have to have an actual set of weights that matches, that all comes from the same company and they're the same design and they have a little stand and, you know, we're going to feel like there's this other obstacle and maybe more money spending that has to happen. So I'm here to tell you that the only things I have spent money on are some kettlebells simply because I couldn't find them when I looked and looked in thrift stores and the two medicine balls, which I'll show you in a moment. Everything else is either a not official weight or a weight that I found at the thrift store. So in terms of dumbbells, I have everything from, like I have some one and two pounders, here's a five pound, here's an eight pound, here's a nice, check out this one, I'm going to show it to you. It's from the 70s, it's a rusty old 10 pound dumbbell. I was lucky enough to get a set of these gifted by a neighbor. Um, I think this is an eight pounder, no, 10 pounds. The thing about dumbbells that we like is that they have a nice handy handle. And because of their thickness at one end, if you have your grip closed, they cannot slip out easily, right? So they're great for things like farmer carries, where you're just practicing walking around, carrying a weight. Um, they're good for lots of things, obviously, because of the grip. However, sometimes dumbbells allow the weight just to hang on the grip, and we're not truly engaging the grip strength moment to moment and we're not developing the coordination and the um, responsiveness of the hand, palm, wrist muscles themselves. So I also like to practice with weird shaped objects. So here I have a rock. I think this rock weighs about nine pounds. Because of its shape, I can't ever lose consciousness of the whole grip. I have to really, really hold it with my hands. And this actually creates activation through the forearm that is different than if I were just letting a dumbbell hang in my grip. When we start doing um, 
let's say, some dynamic movements using this weight, there's this heightened awareness and challenge and kind of whole body demand because everything right up to my fingertips has to be engaged in the movement. I really like my rock. I know you can find a rock. You could find many rocks. You could create your own set of weights. You could look for different shaped rocks. But this is totally valid and it doesn't cost anything. Another object that I use is this brick. There's a pile of bricks outside my studio. I think each brick I weighed it is seven pounds. And it has a kind of uncomfortable and different than a rock, different than a dumbbell shape, which is also challenging my coordination and my grip strength. I could also hold the brick in different ways because it has the long side and the short side. And all of these different possibilities add a load to my body. Like right now, I'm working with my body weight plus seven pounds. It's just right. Like it's not super heavy, but it's definitely changing my balance, my perception of what I need to do to come up and down. And it's also loading my joints in a way that really builds the co-contraction all around the joint, making it more stable, more responsive. <clears throat> I would say if you have objects in this range, they can, that's all you need, right? So if you say, oh, I don't have a dumbbell, I can't do this, that's not true. You just have to be creative. I also like to use weights like this to just work with joint mobility. So I'm not so much thinking about weight lifting, but I am using this weight as a feedback mechanism to really um, clarify and articulate and strengthen the movement in my shoulder and in my wrist, in this case. Because I don't want to drop the brick on the floor, I feel like my awareness of line, my awareness of how I'm stacking myself, my awareness of the vertical axis is really heightened because I'm paying a lot of attention from the brick all the way down through the rest of my body. And the brick is giving me just a really nice amount of resistance and load so that I can feel my trunk, my shoulder girdle, my arm muscles responding to meet that load. Another object which I don't have right now, if I had one I would show you, um, is a gallon water bottle or you know a gallon plastic jug that you can fill with water or whatever, juice. Um, but I did notice in the studio that I had a gallon of paint. So I believe a gallon of water weighs eight pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So the gallon of paint, which is not all the way full, weighs about eight pounds as well. So I'm gonna use that as my weight as I work on my squats. This is an excellent load for me. It's giving me resistance. It's giving me something to focus on as a counterbalance because my squats aren't great. And that would be the same as having 
let's see, now this is the 10 pounder. Here's the eight pounder, okay? So it'd be kind of analogous to working this way with an eight pound weight. There's no reason that you can't use a gallon jug or a gallon of paint likewise to do a deadlift. Really, there is no difference. It's just kind of um, unsexy and secondhand-ish until you realize it's just as cool. You know, this is like a kettlebell as well. It even has a handle for you. So you could do your gallon of paint deadlifts. You could do your gallon of paint squats. You could do your gallon of paint, um, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Some things have handles, some things don't. It's actually good that we're mixing it up because we want our grip strength to be really versatile, really resilient through its kind of broad spectrum action. The medicine balls are like basketballs that weigh a lot. Um, when I was growing up in junior high school, I remember they were leather covered, and I don't know what was inside of them, sand maybe? Heavy basketball sized object that comes in different weights, and these I did purchase, I think this was kind of early on in my um, strength conditioning journey, and I'm probably I think I've seen these in thrift stores also. I don't know since the pandemic um, how fast all of that stuff is going, but I was in a thrift store three days ago and there were some weights in there. So I think we can keep looking around. But in any case, the, this one is a 12 pounder and I have an 18 pounder. And these are wonderful for I love playing with other people with them. So when we throw and catch, we can really um, work not only with weight transfer, but sort of the receptivity and rebound that our joints need to develop in order to accommodate a dynamic load. So when you're, you can throw it to yourself as well. There's a feeling of needing to receive and respond to the weight because it's quite large and it's quite heavy. And if you were really rigid when throwing it to yourself or to somebody else, it would probably impact you in a way that didn't feel as good. So it's been really a fun object to practice um, whole body loading, but with this kind of real need for uh, receptivity and that's informing the joints kind of making the whole subtle um, like the range of each joint is getting a more loaded workout but then it's quickly going back to a different range because I'm throwing the ball away so these guys make me pant, really. If you don't have a medicine ball, you can do what we've done in this class sometimes, which is to just take a day pack or a backpack and fill it with shoes or soup cans or, you know, just create a large object that is fairly heavy 18 to 20, 22 pounds, and throw that around. Oh, and that reminds me, another way that I like to work with large, heavy objects like the medicine ball. Let me just see if I can approximate this. So here I have the 12 pound ball inside a bag. I can work on the floor with this weight 
in order to drag it, drag it around like from side to side, I could drag it like under my other arm. This is kind of an easier one because it's a ball, so it's got a, a, a round, rolly surface. Imagine a backpack full of shoes or something that's a little bit um, irregular shape or that creates friction. We can create more friction by doing this on a yoga mat so that my pulling action is working against the friction created between the bag and the mat, as well as the load itself. And this was just, oops, the 12 pounder. You could imagine how the heavier it gets, the more challenging it is. These are also core strengthening exercises. They're not just arm exercises because the whole body is creating stability and tension against which to work with the load and the friction. Um, how about using these objects overhead? You know, like you are carrying something on your shoulder, firemen carry, when you do some ground exercises with that, getting up and down with the 12 pound or 18 pound or whatever pound load, you are really directing the load through the whole body and thereby creating strength for the legs, the pelvic floor, the core. It's not just this place that the weight is resting, right? So there's a sense of load pushing you down, it's like gravity has increased. So for you to work up out of it, you're engaging whole body and definitely lower body strength. So just taking a heavy object and working with it in a way that challenges the lower body is going to add mobility joint stability and strength to the whole structure, even if the weight is up high. On that theme, just wanted to show you a couple of more objects. Um, kettlebells, I have some kettlebells. I love them, I have 15, I think 22 and 32 pounds or something. And they're in a category of their own in the sense that there's a whole school or a whole realm of kettlebell training that you can tap into. I'm not a kettlebell teacher, so I just use them in all different ways as far as you know what I can learn from others or ideas that I come up with. Um, of course, they have the wonderful handle or horns, they're pretty compact, that you know you can swing them between your legs, they're not gonna hit your legs because they're, they're very small and dense. Um, but we'll leave kettlebells for another time. They're in my arsenal. What I was gonna say is, what if you just wanted to practice loading your body a little bit in movement, um, lower body strength movements, locomotion, all of that, what do you need? Well, here I have my stool that I use for body work. And I think it weighs six or seven pounds max. Probably says under there, but I don't have my glasses. So, I don't know. What can I come up with? This small amount of load, which is requiring me to just balance and stabilize in a slightly different way than if I had no load, works as a weight, right? 
as I said, I'm not a good squatter, but you know, this is helping to deepen my squat. And yeah, it's like lifting a seven pound weight, six pound weight, whatever. No reason, I mean, you wouldn't think of this as a weight, but it is. <clears throat> well, now that I've gone that far, why don't I just take this chair, which is supposed to look like bamboo, but it's actually metal. It's quite heavy. Let me do a little dead lifting here. You see what I mean? It's, it's awkward, but it's actually more real life. It's more functional in relation to the things we might actually need to do. And because of the odd shape, the grip strength, and the configuration of, wow, maybe I'm carrying something that's a little bit asymmetrical. How can I keep my trunk, my shoulders, my wrists active and working together? Again, um, that question is, it applies to real life objects because we, we don't usually have just dumbbells in our life. I'm feeling like everything in this room, there's a big huge jade plant there that probably weighs 28 pounds. If I picked it up, all the leaves would fall off, but it's awkward, it's big, the leaves are all over the place. It's a thing I actually have to move sometimes. So to use irregular shapes and sort of not classically um, gym-like objects is really good for us. A couple more things that I found in this room were this piece of conduit that was um, left over from a job, like a elect, no, I think this was when we built our greenhouse. Anyway, it's fairly heavy. It's galvanized steel. And I really like the fact that it is giving me some um, joint mobility opportunities. It's really, helping me to work with range of motion in a pretty dynamic way, like I probably wouldn't be doing this with the chair, but there's a load. It weighs something, right? So I um, just wanted to share that this was something else. I obviously use it for other stuff than um, simply weight. It's not my most common weight toy, but um, here I'm working with hip mobility, and there's an added component of weight, so that as I hinge, as I bend, as I get myself through, I'm also supporting this weight with my core. If we want to work with those types of things and we're just really not ready for weight, objects that have a little tiny bit, enough weight to kind of send a message to the nervous system that this is different than freehand, but it's, you know, feather light, we can warm up for or prepare for weighted exercises by using these very light objects. So you saw me do some squats with weight, some deadlift, some kneeling, some kind of Turkish get-up setups. I could just do that with these weights, right? They don't weigh much, and I don't squat as deeply with them because I actually don't have that counterweight helping me, but it's helping me to find the action. You know, just having that up there 
is starting to inform my body brain about a position that I might assume later on with a 10 pound weight, in which case it will be a lot more challenging in terms of load. This is just helping me tune into the alignment. And I also like to work with balancing light objects as a way to clarify my proprioception or sense of where my body is in space. So, whoa, these are so hard. So when I balance the light object on my hand, I have to be super aware of my shoulder position and the way I'm stacking myself. Because if I don't, the object will fall. And that is also good preparation for assuming the same body shapes with a load. Last little thing I saw today was my uh, boom box that I use for playing music during body work or dance classes. It has a handle, so it's a little bit like a kettlebell. I think it weighs 15 pounds. I don't know, 12 or 15 pounds. Why not, right? It's an awkward shape. It's requiring me to configure my joints differently than if it were a dumbbell or a ball. But it's a weight. It's putting a load on my body. And in fact, all of these objects, the weights and the bands, because of their variability, are giving like really, really complete nutrition to our body. They are giving the opportunity for multiple, multiple ranges of motion, joint configuration, grip strength, task-based exercises, right? So in, other than, um, or rather than, I'm gonna do 20 dumbbell reps bicep curls, I could create a task-based practice like I want to take the boom box over there on my shoulder and then I want to put it down and then I want to pick up the chair and bring it back. So I have this uh, task that I'm doing And it's adding a lot of variability to my movement, a lot of asymmetry. I could make the task, now that I'm gonna go back, replace the chair, take the boom box on the opposite shoulder and bring it back, and so forth. So I've been asymmetrical, but I've balanced it out because I did it once on each side. I think I've kind of covered all that I wanted to cover today. Again, I didn't bring anything extra into this room. And I think with a little bit of creativity and after you've seen this video, you could certainly look around your house or your workspace and assemble some objects, a motley crew of objects, some of which are formal uh, fitness items and some of which are just organic gifts from the earth. And what I'm here to do is to help you and guide you through my classes with a series and an ever-changing variety of practices, 
play, focused exercises, progressions, um, invitations to explore, and more, so that we can start to add more load and more resistance to our tissues, which are definitely adapted over millions of years to encounter and come face to face with irregular textures and terrains and obstacles and challenges in the form of, um, you know, rock faces or tree thickets that we have to crawl under or um, loads that we have to bring back to the rest of the group, things like that that we are adapted to do. They are in our DNA, and we do very little of them now because our life is pretty sedentary and pretty convenient. If you are interested in doing some strength training with me in a very out-of-the-box way, check out my website, which will be in the comment section below, and let me know if you'd like to join um, inclusive and fun strength conditioning classes. The inclusive part comes from the fact that we have the choice of what our spectrum of workable weights, resistances, and challenges are. So I'm not going to say to you, um, and you need a 10-pound weight, and a 15-pound weight, and a 20-pound kettlebell. I just want you to gather up a bunch of objects, and over time we will work with different weights, different shapes, different practices to really have a well-rounded and, as I said, well-nourished bodily adaptation to the demands that we place on them. Make us stronger, and who doesn't want to get stronger? A little bit stronger. It will make our joints more stable, more resilient, more sort of intelligent, if you will, in the sense that they can respond to numerous different situations, both spontaneous, um, even unwanted situations, you know, like the one I always refer to is when we go hiking and we get off the trail and then we get in a bad spot and we have to come down and we have to spider crawl or something like that. We want our joints to be um, adaptable and strong enough to meet demands like that. Or say your neighbor asks you to move a really heavy object and you need to bring everything you have to that situation. And then there's just the everyday positive feeling of confidence and good health that comes from having stimulated our bone cells, our muscle cells, our nerve cells. So again, let me know if you would like to join the class. I'll be starting one in the fall. It's inclusive and progressive strength training, and the details are at katiegetchel.com. Thank you for watching this, and start gathering your tools and toys.